What's going on guys, Spencer Clays here, and today I'm gonna to show you how exactly to clean a roof with moss, and you know, get rid of all the moss, clean it, treat it, clean out the gutters, the whole process, step by step, so let's go. So as you guys can see, this roof has a ton of moss right underneath the cedar tree on the north side. Some more moss over here on this northern side. Down here, the south side gets a lot more sun, so it's really not too much moss over here. A Little bit over there. But yeah, so the bulk of it, bulk of our treatment, cleaning is gonna be right over here. So first off, you guys, whenever you're cleaning a roof, make sure you're taking safety into account. Always make sure you have shoes or boots with good grip. You can also rope up and use a roof anchor, which I have other videos about that. But anyways, when it comes to cleaning and treating a roof with moss, especially up here in areas like the Pacific Northwest, you need to keep in mind the factors that can lead to moss growth like this. Namely, moss hates the sun. So anytime you have trees or just the north facing side of the roof, just know you're going to have to put extra attention on that side. Also, since moss is a living plant, it needs organic matter to eat and grow. So the more debris there is, such as leaves, needles, and branches that are up on the roof, it's essentially leaving food for the moss to eat and continue to survive. This is why one of the first things I do for any roof is to lightly brush off the bulk of the moss and any leaves or debris that's built up on the roof. As you can see, I'm using a nylon brush and I'm just gently pushing the moss off with as little pressure as possible. We wanna just get the bulk of it off because we're gonna chemically treat it later. As a general rule, if you can kick the moss off with your foot, then remove it with a brush. If it doesn't come off easily, then you're gonna to wanna to re rely mostly on the treatment. So a couple tips for brushing the moss. Number one, the longer of a brush you can get, the easier it's gonna be on your back and also the farther away from the edge you can stand. Getting a longer brush is especially helpful when you're up on the steep roof where you can't necessarily walk on it. So with a longer brush, you can work from the ladder to remove the moss. I had a question the other day, which actually is how much moss do you take off? And as you guys saw, you know, there's definitely a little bit of moss here and there, but overall in the grand scheme of things, it looks so much better. And like, like I said, we're gonna treat that. Any little bits are, are gonna fall off and die. You just don't want the big bulky pieces up there because um, as you see, it's, it, it brushes off very easily. And yeah, you can definitely see a little bit there. So you don't gotta go too crazy with it, but it's gonna look a lot better. So yeah, keep that in mind. When you're up on the roof, it's going to be tempting to brush off every bit of moss, but you don't have to, nor should you, because if you brush too hard, you can actually scrub off the granules if you're not careful, which is the exact opposite of what we want to do for the roof. You may have noticed too that the moss is really wet still, and that's because moss holds moisture extremely well. And this is one of the biggest reasons we want to remove it because the whole point of a roof is to keep your house dry. But with moss holding moisture all year long, it can actually seep into your roof and it finds little cracks and works its way into your house. I've seen so many instances where clogged gutters or tons of moss on the roof led to having to replace the entire roof or even parts of the walls because water got in and caused thousands of dollars worth of damage. One last method for moss removal is what I call the stick method, where sometimes if the moss is really thick and doesn't want to brush off, as you can see here, I'm just using an actual stick to kind of cut it away from the shingle and then it brushes off super easy. So give this a try. Also, if the moss is really dry and doesn't want to brush off, the stick method can be a great way to remove it without having to furiously use the brush. The last thing to really keep in mind are trees. Out here we have so many different types, and yes, trees are awesome and beautiful, but not necessarily when it comes to your roof. Many times I bring an extension pole saw with me to trim back trees, but you can also just get a knife and cut back any branches that you can reach. Not only are they dropping leaves, but they're also blocking the sun and helping the moss out a lot, so cut them back as much as you can. Once everything has been loosened and brushed off, it's time to do some cleanup. The best tool I found is just a simple leaf blower. You can use it to blow off the roof, clean out the gutters, and later clean up all the crap off the ground. I use a Husqvarna 525 BTX. I love it. As a general rule, you can blow out the gutters with a leaf blower if it's relatively dry. If the gutters are wet, I would clean them out by hand first and then use the blower so that you don't make a huge mess. I also like to bag up the gutter junk when I can. But, you know, making a mess is going to be inevitable, especially when you have 100 pounds of moss that you just cleaned off the roof. So clean out the gutters, whichever way is easiest for you. Make sure the downspouts aren't clogged and that everything is working as it should be. And then once that's done, make sure you're cleaning up as much as you can off the ground. Leave the yard and sidewalks better than when you found it. You don't need to clean up every bit, but do the best you can. A little cleanup goes a long way. This sort of thing really helps the customer experience. Sometimes they'll even hand clean the skylights if they're really dirty. Little things like this are a nice touch if you have time to do them. Always make sure your customer is getting the best bang for their buck. So now once the roof and everything is clean, it's time to treat the roof. Now there are several ways you can do this, but recently I've been switching to a more eco-friendly chemical known as oxygen bleach or sodium percarbonate. I'm going to be selling my own product here soon, so keep an eye out for that. But this is basically powdered hydrogen peroxide. You can also buy it in most laundry detergents like OxyClean, which you can apply it as a powder and then activate it with water. Or sometimes you'll see me leave it because here it rains like every other day, so that works too. You can also soft wash the roof with bleach, otherwise known as sodium hypochlorite. That works great too. The point of both of these chemicals 
chemicals is they are base, meaning they have a high pH, whereas moss thrives in acidic environments of low pH. So we want to raise the pH of the roof, and this is going to kill any leftover moss and make it a lot harder for moss to grow back in the future. Whichever method you have available works, as long as you're coating the roof well, the moss is going to have an extremely hard time coming back. From here on out, it's really important to keep an eye on the roof. Every roof is different. It's in a different area, has different trees. So make sure you're following all these tips. Some folks just need to treat and clean the roof once a year. Other people, I do them twice a year. Some people just once every few years. Just make sure you're staying on top of it and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Also, I have extra resources below in the description, such as one of my books that go into more on the cleaning of roofs and also the business of how you can start making $500 to $1,000 per day cleaning roofs. So check that out. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Peace.